When an air raid siren at the break of dawn heralds the start of an eventful day for the air warriors of Eastern Air Command, the dauntless aviators, the guardian angels of the eastern skies scramble to roar into the skies to hound their prey. Even as the first sighting of an enemy raid is detected and reported, these pilots, always quick on the draw in their operational readiness platform, with fighter aircraft armed to the teeth, scramble to intercept the adversary. Such exercises conducted routinely help the pilots to fine-tune their skills that help secure the inviolability of India's eastern skies and ensure integrity of the airspace. Regardless of the sophistication and efficiency of equipments, airborne or on the ground, the pilots of the Indian Air Force have time and again proved that the capability of the human being behind the machine is a result of the true grit and the professional training it relentlessly pursues. Imbibing and honing their skills, the crucial factor for total effectiveness for all of them. The air warriors in the air bases of Eastern Air Command train hard and sweat more during peace. Each sortie or mission undertaken is preceded by a thorough preparation, planning and then meticulously executed. With the motto, Samareshu Parakramaha, meaning bravery and valor in the face of the enemy, the legacy of Eastern Air Command resounds with many tales of boundless valor. The Indian Air Force is today a modern, technology-intensive force with a proven record of excellence and professionalism. And while the Eastern Air Command at the dawn of the millennium is poised at the threshold of a new paradigm of modernization, it is bestowed with the responsibility of training the newly commissioned fighter pilots into ferocious and lethal air warriors. And when with a resounding roar they take to the sky, the underlying objective in each mission remains the pursuit of excellence. The multi-crew operations of the AN-32 transport fleet exemplify the requirement of teamwork, which remains the hallmark and essence of the spirit de corps of these young pilots. And for most tribal populations living in the remote areas of the Northeast, the sight of a helicopter almost instantly brings a sigh of relief and, more importantly, a smile. Each time it brings in their food and other sustenance materials, almost as if manna arriving from heaven. While the flying environment in the command serves as the launching pad for the fighter pilots of the Indian Air Force, the pilots operating the Chetak and Cheetah helicopters gain invaluable experience before going on to fly in the icy heights of Siachen Glacier. Also known as the sword arm of the Indian Air Force, the Eastern Air Command is one of the five operational commands of the world's fourth largest air force, 
responsible for the security of the airspace of the eastern and northeastern regions of India. The command was first raised on May 27, 1958 as number one operational group and was housed in a royal palace called Ranikuti in South Kolkata. Subsequently, due to strategic reasons, the operational group was upgraded and christened as the Eastern Air Command. It was during the Chinese aggression in 1962 that the need was felt for positioning the Eastern Air Command's headquarters in the Northeast for better operational control. Thus, number one operational group reformed in Tezpur. And finally, on June 10, 1963, the headquarters of Eastern Air Command moved to its present picturesque location in Shillong. The Eastern Air Command over the years has expanded manifold in terms of size, strength and potential and has an illustrious past and an impressive reputation achieved through hard work, courage, sacrifice, wisdom, foresight and resolve of the commanders. In the Eastern Theatre in 1971, the Indian Air Force had gained total air superiority within 48 hours of going into action, a factor which directly contributed to the ultimate capture of East Pakistan garrison in the war. Eastern Air Command has a vast geographical area of approximately 3.6 lakh square kilometers. It encompasses 12 Indian states of which seven are the northeastern states. And uh, it shares its 6,300 kilometer long border with five countries. EAC closely interacts with headquarter uh, Eastern Army based at Calcutta and headquarter Eastern Navy based at Vizakapatnam. For all its joint planning and execution of operations in the eastern region. The 71 war, for example, epitomized the joint planning conducted so meticulously by the Indian Armed Forces. ESE has a total of 19 operational bases with a total manpower of approximately 23,000 personnel and the assets valued at approximately 40,000 crore rupees. It is our first and foremost endeavor to maintain a high degree of operational efficiency, effectiveness, expertise, and preparedness to meet any future threat. Forces under my command are second to none and are always prepared to undertake any task to safeguard the security of our nation, no matter what the degree of difficulty or danger one may encounter. Eastern Air Command, apart from being the cradle of training for fighter pilots, is also the portal of excellence through which the future generations of young pilots of the Indian Air Force pass. Our transport and helicopter fleets meet the requirement of air maintenance in this sector. Approximately 13,000 tons of supplies are airdropped for the Army, paramilitary forces and border roads to remote border posts throughout the year. In addition, aid to civil power is provided during natural calamities and disasters. Vast disparities in the types of terrain and varied vagaries of weather are some of the accompanying peculiarities of this region. It is here in Moftu or the MiG Operational Flying Training Units of Eastern Air Command that fighter pilots of the Indian Air Force begin learning their basic fighter flying skills. Newly commissioned fighter pilots on successful completion of their training get subsequently inducted to the frontline fighter squadrons of the Indian Air Force. The training imparted here remains one of the toughest, concise and comparable among the best in the world. Highly qualified and experienced instructors posted here have the onerous responsibility of grooming their progress. The progress of each trainee pilot is closely monitored both by supervisors at the field levels 
and also at the command headquarters. It is the versatile and proven MiG-21s of the Yor in which the young pilots regularly dot the eastern skies. A career in the armed forces remain a cherished dream for many a young man and woman today. But what is it that essentially allures the youth to become an air warrior? Youth is a critical stage of life when one makes the decisions which govern the rest of his life. So I chose to come to this profession because this way of life stands out in our society. It's much different from what we see in the rest of the country and the rest of our society. There's a main reason why I chose to come to this profession and because of its special lifestyle. It includes thrill, adventure, a lot of professionalism, technical knowledge and to add on, of course, it has a nice lifestyle also. The unflinching workhorses carrying out regular air logistic operations for the troops and the tribal population in some of the inaccessible regions of northeast India is undertaken to a large extent by the tactical medium lift AN-32 transport fleet of the command. The difficult and tricky landings at the advanced landing grounds such as in Vijayanagar in Arunachal Pradesh which demands a very high degree of skill and professionalism of the pilots, is made to look easy enough. To the troops and the tribal population in these remote locations, their landings are celestial. The transport fleet of the command, together with the helicopters, have proved to be the lifeline of the people living in these areas. Casualty evacuation undertaken, both by the transport and the helicopter fleet in the region, has so far saved thousands of precious lives. For all the yeomen and selfless service rendered, a Chetak helicopter unit of the command has earned the sobriquet of the Hovering Angels. Military flying the world over is a challenging task. But it is not just the fighter fleet of the command that signify its operational preparedness. While air maintenance tasks remain an essential part of the flying role of the transport fleet, they can also serve as an ideal weapon delivery platform. These transport aircraft, essentially used in airlifting troops and in air logistic operations, can also quickly don the role of a lethal airship when called upon, doubling up as a force multiplier. Equally challenging is the role of air maintenance undertaken into further remote and inhospitable terrain by the helicopter fleet of the command. The twin-engine Mi-17 helicopters being flown from the air bases of the command carry out air maintenance and air logistics role in areas as diverse as interior Arunachal Pradesh and to other remote places in the states of Mizoram, Nagaland and Manipur. 
The landings at some of the helipads by the pilots airlifting both men and material truly defy daring and challenge. Besides air maintenance tasks, the helicopter fleet also undertakes the special heliborne operations together with the troops of the Indian Army in the region as a part of its joint operations exercise. These exercises, conducted both by day and by night, call for a very high degree of skill and synergy, both in terms of planning and execution. The helicopter pilots from the command also regularly participate in the exercises of other operational commands of the Indian Air Force conducted from time to time. In the forward regions of the Northeast, the Border Roads Organization is involved in construction of roads as a part of the China Study Group. Their road laying efforts has been considerably expedited, thanks largely due to the efforts of the helicopter pilots of Eastern Air Command. A large number of dozers and other heavy duty machinery have been airlifted skillfully by the pilots, thus paving the way for progress. With the help of Air Force, we are able to crash the construction time of our roads by almost one-fourth. Instead of constructing roads from just one end, we are able to induct our dozers at different points. And, that, and with that, we are able to uh, simultaneously deploy four, five, six uh, dozers, whereas earlier on, we could have deployed only one dozer. Then subsequently, sustaining those dozers, supplying fuel to those dozers, supplying rations for the men working there, supplying uh, moving explosives, rescuing casualties, carrying out search and rescue missions. It's all done by the Air Force. And therefore, roads which otherwise would have come up in, say, 15, 20 years' time, they are coming up now in four or five years' time. And this has become the increasing trend. With the help of Air Force, the Border Road Organization is achieving targets at least four times faster. Aid to civil power during floods in the Northeast is an onerous responsibility of this fleet. When floods and supercyclone ravaged the state of Orissa in recent times, the helicopters from the bases of the command provided relief and succor. They also prove messiahs during the floods, which affect Assam's Brahmaputra Valley each year. While training and flying activities remain at the forefront of all operations, the operational efficiency of these flying machines is effectively backed by the personnel of the engineering branch comprising dedicated officers and tradesmen. These airmen, who are one of the finest professionals, ensure that both aircraft and equipment remain at its optimum performance. Backed by state-of-the-art facilities, equipment and modern engineering techniques, these highly trained and motivated airmen form the backbone of all the flying activity. The Technical Type Training Institutes, or TETRAs, of the MiG-21 fighter the AM-32 transport aircraft and the Mi-17 helicopters located in the command have the most modern facilities and teaching aids for the operators. Pilots, both from the Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy, 
along with the engineers and technical tradesmen are trained on the aircraft systems here. Innovations by the engineering officers and airmen have immensely helped in enhancing the quality of training imparted here. The concerns of flight and maintenance safety have been given a high degree of priority in the command to ensure a safe environment for flying operations. General Salam! Salam, mate! Just... While discipline remains the hallmark of the air warriors in their everyday life, three drills are conducted regularly in all the air bases. The men in blue take great pride in marching together to the martial tunes played by the Air Force Band. A healthy body and a sound mind are thus kept in tune. The large infrastructure of the sporting facilities available in the bases provide the enthusiasts all the opportunity to participate in organized games, so very essential in building and maintaining the spirit of camaraderie. Besides outdoor games, indoor games of squash, badminton are often participated both by the personnel and their families. While riding and water sports facilities provide the ultimate adventure for some, an outing on the golf course remains a very gratifying experience for the others. Traditions and service customs mean a great deal to these men in uniform. Such traditions and customs are handed down to each new generation of officers and carried forward by the officers and the gentlemen. The administrative setup ensures that the personnel and their families living in each of the air bases are secure and comfortable. Modern Medicare facilities and hospitals, backed by highly qualified doctors, ensure that the medical needs are well cared for. But the life of any Air Force personnel is truly incomplete without mentioning the contribution of AFWA, or the Air Force Wives Welfare Association. The organization has contributed immensely in enhancing the overall social fabric of the entire Indian Air Force. The various philanthropic activities undertaken by AFWA has endeared itself both within the service and outside. Today our main focus has not only been on the welfare of our Sanginis, which we normally do through ventures, but the upliftment and empowerment of our Sanginis in today's world. Today we have fruitfully achieved this through an awareness campaign in the form of workshops held at all our stations, which has always, of course, been under our guidance and directions. Now these workshops, as you've seen, where are of, we have had, held, in fact, three workshops, welfare workshops. One was the welfare on women, and the second was on the health, and the third, of course, was the welfare of their teenagers. The women's welfare workshop, as you know, has achieved and brought about a general improvement in their all-round personality. Besides being a good human, a good hostess, they have also been taught various interpersonal relationships. And this has helped to make them better wives and mothers. The future of the nation lies with the children of today. At the basis of Eastern Air Command, the resolve and foresight of the commanders is reflected in the high standards achieved 
at the Air Force schools, which are as good as any of the best in the country. However, Udayan, a special rehabilitation school for very special children at Air Force Station Barakpur, epitomizes the true spirit of Afwa. The school, being run by devoted and dedicated personnel from the Air Base, has helped bring smiles and loads of confidence in these bright lives and their guardians. The Indian Air Force today has woven itself into the colorful social fabric of the East and the people understand that the high-flying air warriors are always with them. Whether flying and preparing for war, or just being the Good Samaritan on the ground, the Eastern Air Command remains committed in its pursuit of excellence. The operations undertaken in each mission by its fleet of fighters, transport and helicopters continue to be an unsung saga of commitment, daring and dedication. Reaching out to the eastern horizon, every flight undertaken is symbolic of the true spirit of the great fighting force, the Indian Air Force, and its motto of touching the sky with glory. <laughs> 